told you I had a great aunt who was worth a fortune. Well, look what she's left me. Didn't she like you much? <laughs> it's Qing Dynasty. George, explain to him what that means. It's made in China, so it's rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish, it's worth a lot of money. Now, where shall I put it? On the table. What, here? Oh, yes, that's lovely. <laughs> Ollie, stop that. What are you up to? Just writing your end-of-year report. My what? Not you personally, Janet. Humanity. I have to do it for the Ultron Council. Art, oh, very poor. Have you seen the Turner Prize? <laughs> French, hopeless. You think we're hopeless at French? No, I think the French are hopeless. Fair enough. Maths. Man seems to be getting worse at this subject. Yes, I met a class of Japanese teenagers yesterday and gave them ten simple calculations, but they couldn't answer a single one. They just kept screaming, Stop the molten lava engulfing our school! <laughs> so, anything we are good at? Well, I'm going to give you a good report for behaviour. Mm, you're pretty nice on the whole. You are so naive, Daddy. <laughs> Humans are nice, Ollie. I met a lovely woman only today. Ever, sir. Bye, Sprigger Lucky Ever. Ooh, that sounds exciting. What does it do? Bring you good luck for the rest of your life, sir. Wow, that is amazing. How much? 50p. 50p? Double wow with extra wow. Give me some of that. You see, what a lovely woman. You paid her 50p for that. I did not. I paid her five pounds and told her she was selling it too cheaply. God. Talk about stupid. I know. She should be charging a fortune. George, it's not lucky, Heather. It will not bring you good luck. Ah, well, no, that's just where you're wrong. It already has. What a channel number five like that costs you 50 quid in the shops. But am I asking 50 quid? No, I am not. I'm not even asking 20 quid. Ten quid a bottle. That's all I'm asking. I'll take three. Oh, lovely job, sir. Can't say fairer than that. There you go. That's your next three birthdays sorted. <laughs> now tell me who's lucky. That salesman. George, this is rubbish. It's just water with a bit of lemon juice. And Chanel are charging 50 quid for that. <laughs> they should be had up for fraud. It's not Chanel number five. He was having you on. George, you cannot get something for nothing in this world. Can, Robbie. Daddy got nothing and that salesman got 30 quid for it. So, he was lying to me? Yes. yes. And that Heather woman, she was lying as well? Yes. yes. Think about it rationally, George. How could a bit of Heather possibly bring you good luck? It's like saying rubbing an old lamp could bring you three wishes. I should never have bought that old lamp. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, I just can't tell when people are lying. I know. Nobody lies in Ultron. We're all totally honest. I know. It means marriages don't last long, but at least you know where you stand. Yes. Well, maybe the answer is you shouldn't trust anyone. That way you can't go wrong. Good idea. And to help you, Daddy, I've got a magic rattle that you can carry. It'll rattle when anyone lies to you. Wow, thanks, Ollie. Seventy quid. Fantastic, what a bargain. It's ever since my husband died, you see. Well, he was just coming out of the Halifax on the high street and he had this heart attack and he... It's four weeks ago now and I'm just so depressed and I wondered if the doctor could give me anything. The Halifax isn't on the high street. <laughs> oh. It's on Queen Street. And it couldn't have been four weeks ago because that was a bank holiday Monday and all the building societies are shut so you're wrong there as well. <laughs> Look, I'm suffering from depression. Memory loss as well. <laughs> If you want to see the doctor, take a seat. I don't think I'll bother. Can't be that depressed, then. <laughs> Morning, Mrs Raven. Forgive me if I don't come too close. Why, you got a cold? No, I just don't like you. <laughs> Is Janet around? She's in with the patient. You see, she asked me to get some milk, and I'm finding it a bit tricky. Tricky? Well, I've been all around the shops, and as it is a couple of pence cheaper than the others, but what if it's cheaper because it isn't really milk? Right. And why wouldn't it be milk? Because they found something worthless that looks like milk. So you think you're getting a bargain, but in fact, they're conning you. Like Chanel number no. five. You see my problem? We can all see your problem. <laughs> Hello, George. Oh, Janet, I beg you, section him now. Good morning, one and all. I'd like you all to meet the new lady in my lucky life. Charlotte Norris, presenter of my absolutely favourite show on television. Lesbian love stories. <laughs> no, the religious programme. God help us. <laughs> we were both at the studio two days ago, weren't we, Charlotte? 
Our eyes met across a crowded room and... A crowded and very dark room, was it? <laughs> you must be Mrs. Raven. Piers warned me about your impish sense of humour. Piers is a very special man. It is very rare to find someone in television who is so devoted, like myself, to the teachings of Christ. Isn't that right, Piers? I do my best to follow the path of righteousness, but I'm aware I fail the Lord on occasion. Surely not. <laughs> Nonsense, Piers. You're too harsh on yourself. You've got to stop being modest. Words I never thought I'd hear. And you think of the good you've done, the millions you've raised for charity. Millions? Charlotte, come through to my surgery. I've got a new Bible to show you. <laughs> you've heard of Christian aid? Well, this is the man who founded it. But he's so modest, you won't find his name on it anywhere. No, I bet we won't. <laughs> I've heard some things in my time, but that is incredible. I know. To think Piers founded Christian aid. <laughs> he didn't found Christian aid. How many more times do I have to tell you? Don't believe everything you're told. Sorry. Great, precious. We're collecting on behalf of Help the Elderly. Is it okay if we collect in here? Of course it's okay, Stanley. You don't need to ask. George, I'm sure you'd love to give to a good cause. I certainly would, Ella. But how do I know this is a good cause? How do I know you're not lying? I beg your pardon? Well, you could be keeping it for yourselves. George. It's okay, Janice. I'm getting the hang of this now. Go on. Prove you're not ripping me off. How dare you? Come on. Where does the money go? To help the elderly. Which elderly? What are their names? Well, I don't know. How would I know that? You see, you take all our money off us and you don't know where it's going. Help the elderly. Help yourselves more like. Ah! Violence! The last refuge of the guilty. I want my money back. So do I. No, you can't have your money back. I can. Oh, God, they're going to fight. Oh, the day's looking up at last. <laughs> and in a shock move, the local branch of Help the Elderly has been forced to suspend its fundraising following allegations of fraud. You pillock. You told me not to trust people. I didn't mean my parents. I'm with you, George. I made them give back that 20 quid I donated. Well done, Arnie. You gave help the elderly 20 quid? No, but they don't know that. <laughs> I raise money for charity. For people with psychiatric problems. Because like I said to Gandalf the other day, they're but for the grace of God. <laughs> right. Look, I think we're getting off the point. The point is, you have got to learn when people are telling the truth. Right. And what you need is practice. So I suggest we all tell you something and you have to decide whether we're lying or not. Brilliant idea. This should be fun. Okay, I'll go first. No, I reckon you're lying. Janet's going to go first. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying I'll go first. We haven't started yet. No, you're lying again. We have started. I'm not fooled that easily. Life's too short. George, just ask one of us a question and see what we say. Right. Tyler, tell me about your parents. Well, my mother was half English, half Irish and came from Liverpool. And my dad was half human, half walrus, and came from the lost city of Atlantis. He could be telling the truth. I am telling the truth, Master. I'd never lie to you. George, just ask me something. Right. Janice, do you love me? No, George, I don't love you. I've never loved you. I've never even liked you. OK, do you think I'm lying or telling the truth, George? <laughs> You always told me you loved me. <laughs> I thought you did love me. Oh, for God's sake. Feeling better? <laughs> yes, thank you. You are so convincing. Daddy, you are such a wuss sometimes. <laughs> Look, I got an idea. I know exactly how you can tell when people are lying. How? You call the Ultron Council and ask them to bestow upon you the ancient power of, mas of mascara. Of course, the ancient power of mascara. What does that go with? The mighty force of lip gloss? The super strength of blusher? Look, Janice, this is a serious power. Well, you should not have a silly name for it, then, like that rule about invisibility. There's nothing silly about the third law of Bisto. Hmm? <laughs> it happens to govern our planet. And keep your food moist. Look, using mascara could place me in great danger. Especially in North Alt on a Saturday night. <laughs> Will you just shut up? Sorry, sorry. So what does this ancient power of eyelash thickener do, then? It enables you to read people's minds, know what they're thinking. Brilliant, Master. Do it. Do it. You want him to know what you're thinking? Oh, yeah. Because then he can tell me, because I never know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Daddy, can I do it, too? Of course you can, Ollie. All Ultronians can. Now, hang on. 
It's okay, Janet. They put a child lock on all his powers so he can't access dirty thoughts. Spoil sports. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, George. I'm not letting you. Why not? Because my mind is private. It's personal. I've got all sorts of weird and sick thoughts going on in my head I don't want you to know about. Can I have a different mummy, please? I'm scared. No, it's all right, darling. We all have sick thoughts. It's normal. No, I'm really scared. <laughs> it's dangerous, George. What if you caught me thinking, oh, I don't know, thinking Tyler was really attractive? How would that make you feel? You think Tyler's really attractive? No, of course I don't think Tyler's attractive. I'm just saying, what if? You don't think I'm attractive? <laughs> What's wrong with me, mistress? Oh! <laughs> I've had it valued, Ollie. And do you know something? There are people in this world that would pay £10,000 for this little vase. Are they on medication? <laughs> no, they're collectors. But they're not going to get it because this has been in my family for 200 years and it's going to stay in my family. So you won't sell it? No, I won't. Are you on medication? <laughs> Daddy will be home soon. I'm glad you're happy with Daddy again, Mummy. I'm just pleased he listened to me, darling. He knew I didn't want him mind reading, so he hasn't gone ahead and... How do you know I'm happy with him? Um... Are you reading my mind? I don't think any less of you, Mummy. That's not the point! <laughs> George, are you reading my mind? Because if you are, I won't have it. It's all right, Janet. You don't need to say anything. So you'll stop? No, I mean, you don't need to say anything. I'm reading your mind. Oh, stop! <laughs> you may say stop, but I know what you're really thinking. You're thinking it's a great idea. No, I'm not. No, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, sorry, I got my signals mixed. Now I'm hearing you, Janet. What I'm thinking is this. Janet, language. It's all right. Ollie's got a child lock. Actually, I forgot to put it on. Think some more rude words, Mummy. Right, that is it. I want this power removed. But it's brilliant. It can't possibly go wrong. He's just saying that, Mummy. It's not what he's thinking. Look, you... And now Daddy's thinking some rude words. Right, you're losing this power. That's not fair. And I'm going to keep the power for myself. Oh, George, please don't do this. Janet, let me just show you the advantages. Like, tonight, you only have to think something, and I'll do it. Instantly. I'm thinking you'll be sleeping in the bathroom. <laughs> so you are. Hi, Mummy's home. Hi, Janet. So I was thinking we could get a takeaway tonight. Ta-da! Oh, well done, George. And also, I thought Tyler could join us. Ta-da! That's why I got extra. Oh, and I also brought your nan. No, a uh, nan, George. A uh, nan bread. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Bye, nan. It's okay. She won't remember. Have you erased her memory? No, she just doesn't remember. <laughs> I, I hear the mind reading's going well, Master. Would you read my mind? My pleasure, Tyler. Right. Fascinating. I had an interesting day at work. I know. This patient came in for some holiday jabs. And Janet spotted a heart defect and saved her life. Well done, Janet. That was my story. And this way I can skip all the boring bits. But I'll never be able to tell you about my work. I know. It's brilliant, isn't it? Because it's never as interesting as mine. Today, I stopped a paranoid from jumping in front of a train. Brilliant, oh mighty muscly one. Yes. I grabbed his hand and I said, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking everyone's after you, but they're not. Right, so you, a complete stranger, told him you knew exactly what he was thinking? Yes. And you think that'll make him less paranoid? I'll check all the stations. <laughs> I think Psalm 40 is my favourite. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my calling. Yes, beautiful. What's Ooh. your favourite psalm? Do you know, I think I love them all. <laughs> Equally. <laughs> You are so sweet. Charlotte, you know we were talking of ethical matters earlier. Well, just uh, picking a subject entirely at random, I was wondering what your view was on sex before marriage. Uh, well, I'm opposed to it, obviously. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Yes. It's disgraceful, I think. <laughs> Although, having said that, I was researching into St. Paul recently. Oh, I love St. Paul. His letters to the Corinthians are exquisite. Aren't they just? Mm. And I came across a little-known letter from St. Paul to the Spartans, I think, in which he said that premarital relations are just fine. Really? Yes, I, uh, I took a transcript. <clears throat> uh, and lo, having reconsidered, I say there now about it, 
faith, hope, charity, and intimacy before marriage. <laughs> these four. And the greatest of these is intimacy. Well, that's extraordinary. It is. I shall have to think about this. We have got to stop this. She has to be told. Janet, you have no right to stand in the way of someone's happiness. You what? Can I just say, I hope you'll both be very happy. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Raven. He's such a kind man. And not just with Christian aid. I've got a set of triplets to bring up, and it gives me a hundred pounds, you know, every Monday, just to help me out. Yes, that is wonderful. <laughs> oh, look! It's Monday today, I hadn't even noticed. <laughs> Get your wallet out, darling. <laughs> Actually, it'll be two hundred pounds, I'm afraid, because you forgot last Monday, didn't you? <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> you are such a saint. <laughs> I'd better be going. You couldn't lend me a tenner, could you? I can't, I'm afraid. Bye. So when you said I had no right to stand in the way of someone's happiness, I meant mine. I've been screaming for thousands. I'll get you for this, you witch. Next patient to say, Dr. Crispin. Yes? I lost my husband a month ago, Doctor. I'm depressed. You're depressed. I've lost 200 quid. <laughs> Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. You two OK? We're being investigated for fraud. So, no, we are not OK. Right. I need some tranquilizers. Me too. I can't stop shaking. And it's getting pretty worrying. Right. But it's starting to affect my golf swing. Stanley, nobody cares about your stupid golf swing. I care. Well, I don't. Well, I do. Super, if you'd just like to take a seat. You can go through now. George, what are you doing? Just thought I'd stand here and read some minds to help with my report. Oh, no, you don't. You read Mrs. Raven's mind, it'll depress you for years. You can't stop me, Janet. All right, well, just hang on a second. Mrs. Raven, do you think you could think some nice thoughts for a couple of minutes? Sorry you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> nice thoughts about nice things, like small, cuddly animals. Dying. No, not dying. Living and breathing. In the path of a juggernaut. No. OK, forget animals. Just think something else. Something nice. I'll try, but I won't be able to do it for long. What shall I do on Sunday? Oh, I know. I'll take Mum out. Take her on a nice drive down to Margate. And leave her there. <laughs> That'll teach you to forget my birthday. Oh, look, there's that Mrs. Tot. Her husband died last month. Oh, why does she have all the luck? <laughs> a five iron's best, I reckon. Or maybe a four. No, definitely a five. Hit her over the head with a five iron <laughs> and then bury her under the papillon. Cheer up, cuz. The entire human race is sick. How can I cheer up? Don't exaggerate, George. My dad isn't sick. He thinks about killing your mother all the time. I followed him. They're, they're choosing wallpaper. He's dreaming about walling her up. They're buying dog food. He's wishing she was in the tin. <laughs> That's terrible. We all have horrible thoughts. It doesn't mean we are horrible. It does to me. Do you know how often men think about sex? They say about every six seconds, but I find that very hard to believe. Exactly. It's once every two seconds. Every two seconds. They think of nothing else. Rubbish. Dr. Crispin was thinking about it yesterday while he was draining a cyst. Yes, well. I'm sure you don't think about nothing else, Arnie. Boy, is she hot. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Arnie, that's my wife. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not just that. I've read the minds of the whole world, Janet. Everyone lies and everyone cheats. So I've given up mind reading. Good. And suffice to say, this end of year report I've been filling out on humanity, you've all failed. I'd better take it to the Ultron Council. Right. Won't be long. Sorry, I know I'm meant to be taking this seriously, but it really is nonsense. I mean, we failed some Ultron end of year report. So what? What are they going to do? Make us do the year again? It's ridiculous. There is one thing they could do. Oh, yeah? Like what? What? What could they do? Right. I've been to Ultron, presented the report, and got the response. That was quick. We're superheroes, Janet. We don't hang around. Yeah. So what did they say? Well, there's some good news and some bad news. The bad news is they're disgusted with mankind's behaviour, so they've decided to blow up the earth. <laughs> right, and the good news? They thought my report was the best one I've ever done. That's great 
news. Well done, Master. Thank you. Yeah. They've even given me a commendation. Oh, fantastic. Big bloody deal. Blow up the earth? I have to say, I thought they were overreacting a bit personally. Overreacting? You don't have to shout, Janet. Of course I'll shout. They're going to blow up the earth. I thought they'd just punish you in the usual way. What do you mean? Well, who do you think sent David Dickinson? <laughs> I don't believe this. They can't just wipe us out. The official term is permanently exclude you from the universe. They'll use a neutron ray. It'll be very quick. Oh, that's a big comfort. I thought it was your duty to protect us. It is. It's our duty to protect all inferior life forms. But man has fallen below acceptable standards, so he has to go. So I'm an inferior life form now? You always have been, Janet. One I happen to love very much. Look, it's not the end of the world. No, silly me, it is. <laughs> but they're not going to get rid of everything. What does that mean? Well, they're going to keep Italy. Not the Italians, obviously. They're far too noisy, but Italy's lovely. <laughs> and, and they're going to save all the dolphins. Ah. Uh, nice animals, lovely smiles. And they're going to save all the good people in the world and rehouse them on Ultron. How many is that? Forty-three. I've got a list here. <laughs> Jerry Halliwell. They're saving Jerry Halliwell. She's really nice, Janet. Jennifer Lopez. She must be nice too. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Look, Janice, don't question the Ultron Council. It's made up of ten elderly men who know exactly what they're doing. You're telling me. Uh, and you're on it, of course, with Ollie. Am I on it, Master? Yep, there you are. Look, Tyler. Oh, no, that's Liv Tyler. <laughs> they must have liked her in Lord of the Rings. Sorry. Oh, Tyler. Oh, don't worry about me, Mistress. I've got a holiday cottage on Jupiter that I can go to. And Arnie, you're on the list as an Ultronian. Oh, thanks, cuz. What about Mrs. Raven? After all, she is the love of my life, the center, meaning, and purpose of my entire existence. Afraid not. Fair enough. <laughs> They're launching the ray at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, so that gives me 22 hours... No, I'm sorry, I'm not having this. You got us into this mess with that stupid report of yours so you can go back to the Ultron Council and tell them to change their minds. Look, Janet, don't tell me what to do. You are a mere human, an inferior life form, whereas I am a super... Just do it! Right, I'll do it straight away. Well? Okay. They've decided to give mankind one last chance. Yes. And it's down to you, Janet, since you're the one making such a fuss. If you can prove to them that mankind is worth saving... Okay, what do I have to do? They won't destroy the earth if you can raise a thousand pounds for charity by seven o'clock tomorrow evening. That's easy, we're saved. From the four worst people in my report. Your parents, peers, and Mrs. Raven. I'll start packing. <laughs> Mrs. Raven, I need to raise a thousand pounds for charity by seven o'clock this evening, and I need your help. Okay, I know a few people I can blackmail. No, I mean, I, I need you to give me the money. Yeah, well, I'll give it to you as soon as they give it to me. <laughs> Sorry, I mean some of your money. <laughs> My money? <laughs> no way. You'd be doing it as an act of goodness. Definitely no way. <laughs> Piers, help me. I need to raise a thousand pounds for charity and Mrs. Raven won't give me anything. Oh, I'm not surprised. Some people in this world are just incredibly mean. <laughs> Here's 20p. Oh, no. I also have fantastic news about the wonderful Charlotte. She's finally said yes. So tonight, at last, will be the night. You don't want to bring it forward to this afternoon? Why? You just think you might need to. No, no, she doesn't finish work till seven, and then, my, oh, my, is the earth going to move for us? It's going to move for everyone. I want to see us, darling. Yes, I need to raise a thousand pounds for charity. Well, don't ask us. I'm sick of charities. You do your little bit and you get investigated for fraud. They can all go to hell. Mm. Right. I know this may sound weird, but this really isn't any normal collection. If you four can do this one good deed today and give me a thousand pounds, you will be saving the entire planet. I really can't tell you why, but the future of mankind is in your hands. That's a good scam. I must use that one myself. <laughs> what do you mean, the entire planet? Just what I say, Mum. You'd be saving everyone on Earth. What? Drug dealers? Vandals? Everyone, Mum. I'm not saving drug dealers and vandals. Nor am I. What kind of charity saves drug dealers and vandals? OK, forget the world. Forget the world. Do it for me. Just give 250 quid each for me. For your daughter. For your friend. Well, you're really more of an employee than a friend. <laughs> I don't have any friends. How do I know you won't give it to these drug dealers and bandits? Oh. <laughs> ah, Charlotte. Angelic one. 
I did a piece live on air this morning about St Paul's letter to the Spartans. Ah. Oh. The mm. switchboard was jammed with complaints and I've just been sacked. I've also phoned Christian Aid and they've never heard of you. Right. So, still on for this evening? <laughs> Police in California are investigating the sudden disappearance of Jennifer Lopez and Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Europe, experts are puzzled by the even more extraordinary disappearance of Italy. <laughs> oh, they like her as well. I've delivered all the others to Ultron. Ollie's flying there now. You lot ready? What the hell is that noise? Oh, that's the last of the dolphins. I have them in the bath. Come on. <laughs> We've only got three minutes. I'm not coming, George. What do you mean, you're not coming? I'm not coming. I know you're my husband, I know Ollie is my son, but this is my world. I can't live on Ultron. I can't live with some super beings who could do this to my planet. Man might cheat and lie, but you're far, far worse. I ain't going either, George. Arnie, you're not serious. No, of course not. You think I'm stupid? <laughs> I'll take the dolphin. Please, Janet. I can't, George. I could never live with myself. But, Janet... I just go, George. Please. Just go. I thought you were going to Jupiter, Tyler. I was. The cottage is ready, but I can't get a flight till Tuesday. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> One minute to go, mistress. It's all right, Tyler. We're going to be OK. They won't do it. George won't let them. He loves me too much. That's why I've stayed behind, to force him to save the world. Brilliant! I know. <laughs> you see, what did I tell you? Sorry. I forgot my helmet. Bye. <laughs> right? Right? Five seconds to go. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. You see? He has saved us. We're okay. Oh, no, me watch is fast. I'll start again. <laughs> Four. Shut up, Tyler. Panic's over, Janet. George! The world is saved. I gave the Ultron Council the thousand pounds from your parents, Piers and Mrs. Raven, and they've given the Earth a second chance. Oh, what a relief. That's brilliant. So everyone's coming home? Yes. Well, everyone except Jerry Halliwell. They've decided to keep her. Double brilliant. <laughs> Hang on, they didn't give us a thousand pounds. Didn't they? Are you sure? George Sunday, have you just lied to the Ultron Council? <laughs> oh, George. So where'd you get the money from? George, <laughs> please tell me you haven't just sold my priceless vase for one thousand pounds. No, I did not. How dare you? I'm getting good at this lying. <laughs> It'll be cheap as fries.